Um, no, and I, but I do remember this though. Even though oh, Sega fuck. doesn't make consoles anymore, the Dreamcast is literally the James Dean of video game consoles. Who's James was... Dean? I'm sorry, what? 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 Even, no, dude, even I know who James Dean is. What? Hold it. Shame. Just answer the question. Who's James Dean? Yikes. He's a, he's a, okay, he's in the fifth, he was actor. like the most one famous actor. One at a time, actor. one at a time. Go ahead, Peter. He was like the most famous actor of the 1950s, but the thing is, everyone always remem remembers him fondly, and a lot of people say that the reason why is because he actually died very young. Like, most people, mm -hmm. most people also don't know this. Okay, well, some people don't know this, uh, I should say. He was only ever in three movies, but he was an amazingly talented, amazingly skilled actor despite his young age, and all three movies happened to be hits, especially at the time. So he was really much in the public eye before... Uh, and, and this is how really I. Young. No, no, here's the thing. I only found out about this because I was studying ghosts and urban legends. Um, this is called the Curse of Little Bastard, because Little Bastard was the name of the car, mm -hmm. and uh, he died. So he died in the car crash of this old 1950s ah! roadster. Although there is an interesting urban legend for those of you who want to look it up, and like ghost stories or haunted objects about that car supposedly killing everyone who's ever come into contact with it, and. Apparently, to this day, no one knows where it is. Because the semi-truck that was carrying it crashed, but apparently the restraints on the car broke before it hit something. Hmm. Yeah, he died at age, like, 24 or something like that. And he was, yeah. like, an American heartthrob. Yeah. yeah. He was, uh, oh, rebel damn it. without a cause, I yep. think. But anyway, yeah, the reason the Dreamcast is the James Dean is because it, the Dreamcast... It, 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 yeah, no, no, yeah, it's the idea is it didn't exists the star that burns twice as bright shines only half as long it didn't exist long enough to have any bad games on it or to stagnate it died right when it had a sh like a rollout of hits for it so uh, everyone remembers it finally because it died in its crescendo fuck yeah god god damn these fucking porcupines man they're being mm. you know people still make freeware games yeah with the Dreamcast, you what you do is you go to the website, they'll make a game for your Dreamcast, and you just put a blank CD into your CD drive, burn it, drop it in your Dreamcast, and it works. And people still do that to this day. Didn't, like, Sega also try and do online multiplayer for, like, the first time on the Dreamcast or something? There is a 56k modem on it. I don't know if they ever got around to actually implementing anything with it. I don't know, but I never, I didn't own a Dreamcast back when it was like relevant. God damn it, Equestria guy! <laughs> but there is a 56k modem jack in it. Yeah, but Equestria guy is right. It's called the Cat of Nine Tails. That enemy is that a legit or is that a joke? It's a legit. He went into the fucking. He searched it up and showed me a picture, and I was like, oh, so that's what it is. Well, fantastic! I'm in another goddamn beehive. Dude, steal the honey. I'd them. probably do that, but I wouldn't even... I don't even, <laughs> even care about stealing the goddamn honey. I just want to finish the game. Are you tired of it? I've already been like having trouble with it ever since I started, but I didn't want to rage quit because I did that way too many times. Mm. And despite oh, me... Here. And despite me having an unpopular opinion about the game, it's not a bad game. There's just a lot of things I don't like about it. Yeah, so I mean, it's like, I could, could you say that you're having fun playing it, though? I mean, in some areas, yes, but... Hang on. I, I'm being, like, so focused, because I don't want to get to, like, take a hit and shit. All right, save state. I'm going to take a hit right now. Oh, shit. <laughs> nice. Oh, shit. I'm Need not going to gonna lie. I kind of skipped the SNES era, and, like, like my I didn't really start playing video games until, like, PlayStation, N64, Game Boy Color era. I mean, you were kind of a baby at the time when SNES was around. Yeah. 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 You fucking killed him, dude. <laughs> you're, you're, come on. Hang on. Oh, uh, dude. What, what there fucking we go. did I have? Oh, I had the... Fuck. I had the Super Nintendo... I had the, <laughs> I had the, I had the fat PlayStation Two. Whoa! And then I got, 
And then I got the GameCube. And then I had the thin PlayStation 2. And then it was yeah. like play, PlayStation 3, the fat PlayStation 3. The one with 80 gigs on it. Oh, this is the one that you had all the functions and the PS2 oh, backwards no. compatibility. Uh, damn it. Yeah, I had one of those PlayStation 3s. It was old as hell, dude. I don't even think people remember what it looked like anymore. No, I do. I do. It looks like a grill. It does people... look like a grill. He's right. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. This looks like something I break out on the camping trip just to fry up a sausage or burgers or something. Or <laughs> gore. I'm going to have camping steak. Whips out PS3, opens lid. Dude, I think the best... Damn it! Fucking... Motherfucker! Okay, there's another DK barrel. Thank you. I'm gonna say it there. I think the best handheld gaming device, or the best one, it like, from old times, or, like, old school, has got to be the Game Boy SP. Because that's... I like, one. Like, the Game huh? Boy Advance, you mean? No, dude, I had one of those. The Game Boy Advance SP looked like a little laptop. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like a little, like a little Switch phone, dude. Like a little flip phone. Yeah, so that, that thing was dance. great. I love that thing. I I Dude, used it was I used so to... good because it had a backlight on it, and you could play that shit in the dark. Yeah, finally. yeah. It took a couple of years until Nintendo got their shit together and did that. Yeah, that's what that's one of those things of what Sega actually did right to an extent when it came to the Game Gear because the Game Gear was also backlit. But the downside is is that with technology being young, it would use up too much battery juice. Didn't it use up like six AA batteries? Yes, within, they like, did. Four hours or so something. So what you're saying is, Sega did what Nintendo don't. Oh, I mean, I'm gonna two was fucking a... kick you out of this call if you ever <laughs> oh, say that God. again, motherfucker. So guys, do you remember in the '90s when we didn't have lithium batteries? We had uh, nickel cadmium, and it was like excellent. I'm gonna load up my CD player and listen to some music. Cool, I've gotten through about an album or two, and now the battery is dead. Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. Dude, didn't the SP have, like, a rechargeable battery as well? So it had, like, fucking yeah. uh, backlight capability and a rechargeable battery? So you didn't have to spend a fortune getting AA batteries? Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, no, these were, um, from what I remember, that I think the SP was around when lithium-ion batteries were a thing, because that was... There's no way it'd be nickel cadmium. That would have worn out, like, instantly. I will be right back. Alright. Okay, I don't know yeah, where no, I'm supposed to go. I, I'm pretty sure that was just some, like, early lithium lithium battery. Damn it. I still, I still remember my first cell phone. It was one of those old Nokia phones. Oh, God, Dude, do you want here. my first phone? Razor. What? The Razor? What? No. Okay, so this was a very actually it technically is a razor. Whoa! It was shit. a variant of the razor that was like slightly it it wasn't as wide, but it was still a razor. Oh. Like it it still had the same aesthetic and it still had the same like like the hardware and it was still the exact same. It just was it was it just wasn't as wide. Oh. See, so yeah, my first so yeah, there you go. Blast of the past. My first phone technically was a razor. Hmm. Dude, I remember the very first fucking like before the Game Boy Color. The Game Boy? Oh my god. It's like I walking still... around with a fucking brick in your pocket. Hang on, what's up here? It's a brick. First Game Boy oh, why color. did you have to ooh the brick? <laughs> I No, here's the thing. Okay, okay, here's the thing. A thought popped into my head because of my childhood. For those of you who don't know, I was act I wasn't actually born in New England despite me talking about it a lot of the time. I just mostly grew up there. Yeah. I was actually born in Detroit. So I'm just think thinking to myself, like, if I had one of those it'd be like, come back to the house in Detroit, someone's kicking the door. God it's a robber. Damn. You need a weapon to defend yourself. It's okay, I got this blick. <laughs> and I would have been on and it would have been at oldest nine. So the hence the voice. Oh my yeah. god. Fuck! Hello, Camille. Yeah. I got this brick. Yeah, but the Game Boy, the original Game Boy, was a fucking thick piece of hardware, dude. It, it was, was. But man, I I have so much nostalgic memories of that. Like, okay, I will say this. I didn't necessarily grow up with the actual Game Boy. I used to have the green Game Boy. You know, they had those yeah. like different color models and shit. Uh, but then, like, I got tired of playing around with it because I didn't like dealing with the battery, uh, dying all the time. Yeah. 
Um, eventually I got the Game Boy Color and I had a lot of fond memories of that. Um, but I do have such a huge respect for it that I just love looking at this thick console and just like, this was back in the day, you know, that sort of feel to it. Yeah, this is an old man, Golden Fox, talking. Hey, Gold, you want to know what classic game I had on my Game Boy? What? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Which oh, one? There's been like multiple renditions of uh, TMNT. There was it was like uh, the Game Boy version. It was still just as hard as balls as the NES version. If I remember. Oh, that. you. <laughs> Normally, I would feel sorry for you, but at the same time, because of how much a dick you are, you're just like you're a glut for punishment. I also had Gremlins Two: The New Batch on Game Boy. Can these guys be taken care of? Nope. Okay. I can bounce off of them. Wee! Whoa! Okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, fuck that shit. Fuck that shit, I'm out. Yeah, no, it's a giant ass fucking bee coming right after me. I'm like, oh, fuck. No, no, you gotta get away from that. Oh, no, shit! Yeah. Fuck, you snuck behind me, you goddamn bastard! Fuck! You fucker. <laughs> How did you do this? <laughs> He ran up on you, dude. He wasn't about. He wasn't about any of that shit. He was like, <laughs> you, "You ate all my beans, bitch." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You ate all my beans, bitch. <laughs> I still love that quote, despite how racist it is. It's because of well, the I fucking delivery. It's not. Go ahead. It's not. It's not racist if you don't say the bad word. Yeah. Then it's just you yelling at someone for stealing your beans. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it's just the fucking delivery. I just want to point out, Goldie, it is a multi-ethnic epidemic of people stealing people's beans. It is not attached mm. to any one race. Yeah. I was sitting at a multicultural table. We all had our beans stolen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jedi Padawan, no! No! You ate all yes. my beans, bitch. <laughs> yeah, you ate all my beans. You do all my beans. A dude this who fucking calls eats for more bees. Who fucking eats bees? Like, dude, you'd be surprised. There's plenty of parts of the planet where people will straight up. Oh shit! Oh shit! Go, okay, go, I, go, 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 go. I want to point something out about that. My um, okay, so my grandparents are really well traveled, especially my grandfather. He's a professor at Hope College in Holland, Michigan. Yeah. Awesome guy. No, but, no. Uh, two of the places he's traveled the most. Go, he go, has go, been to Europe. Oh, um, asshole, asshole. He, oh my god. What is it? He's traveled up the Amazon River no. enough to give tours of it, apparently. Oh. And you can go on it if you're one of his students or sign up for the thing. And the other place he's continent he's really well explored is actually Africa. Ah. Uh -huh. Because um, I have family that live in Uganda as missionaries of all things. I still find that hilarious, but no. And it, my name is etched in the in one of the Ugandan churches that they established. My name is etched in the concrete foundation. And it, for Christmas, they gave okay. So there's this local tribe of warriors in this region of Uganda called the Maasai. Really okay. awesome people. Um, for Christmas, they gave me an authentic Maasai warrior dagger. Like and it still has the sheep and everything. It's made out of animal skin. The blade is crude iron. It's, it's like, legit. This is cool. I don't tell them this because they don't know I'm a witch, but I use it as my witch's blade. Yeah. I use an African, a tribal African warrior dagger as a witch's blade. Okay, that's so... Cool. That's cool. I think I can kind of piece together that I have to be patient and use cool. this motherfucker. Okay. Just be aware of that stinging fucking thing in the back. Oh my god, that stinging needle. Beware I, I, that stinging me. Shut <laughs> up. Shut up. They're actually going to you goddamn degenerate. To Don't ever use bee puns on me. Oh, um, Please keep going. No. Uh, yes. Yeah. Puns. I also wanted to point out um, another uh, story that my grandfather had in Africa was that you know, he's an ornithologist, so he studies birds, right? Why? Yeah. So naturally he sees this like beautiful ass bird and he's in the uh, he's I think I think this was the same time he was somewhere outside Kilimanjaro. Because he was around that... He was in that region of Africa. That's the Serengeti, right? 
Am I supposed yeah. to hit the needle? Okay. Um, so he sees a bird, right? Yeah. And he's like, fucker? he tells the guy, can I, can I go up and study the bird? And the guy, like, knows all the wildlife. Like, <laughs> the hand, so he knows what you're supposed to do and not do. And he's, and he's essentially doing it so he can oh do the best Oh, my fucking God. Okay, um, so you had to hit him directly underneath the needle. Wow! Trying to hit him is already a pain in the ass as is. Jesus. Bird puke. Poor <laughs> puke. Um, yeah. You have to puke oh. out eggs. Ah, damn it. Ugh. That's not how anatomy works, but okay. Well, no <laughs> shit. It's a fucking game. <laughs> I'm wow. just going to puke out my baby. <laughs> That's what that one vulture did. Just got rid of its own children just to kill me. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Sounds like a Kronos thing. Um, <laughs> right. So, so this is going to be a life lesson for you all if you ever encounter, if you ever have such an encounter as this. So my grandfather goes up to study the bird, and the guide like places a hand on my grandpa's grandpa's shoulder, looks at me, and says, "Run!" <laughs> and a water buffalo is charging at them at really high speed. Oh god! god. Damn it! So, uh, oh, oh. life lesson for all y'all. If you encounter a water buffalo, here is what you're supposed to do. You see, they don't actually find you through their eyes. Their eyesight is actually kind of terrible. They find you through their scent. So what you have to do is let the thing chase you. It's a little bit faster than you. But uh, let it chase you, and then right at the last second before it can hit you, turn sharp 90 degrees, and it will just keep running in a straight line because it doesn't know you've gone away yet. Ah, Okay. Gonna go for a half an and hour. you, you, you might have to do that multiple times because it'll eventually figure out that it's not chasing you anymore, and then it adjusts itself. Uh, and he got back into the jeep with the guide who was also doing the same maneuver. And my grandfather's like, "So how many times do you have to do that?" And he's like, "Oh, until you're back to the truck." 